Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the Get to Know Your Witches tag. I always love hearing about how other people came to practice and what it is that they like to do and things like their, you know, their moon sign or their rising sign. I love knowing all that stuff about people. And so I thought maybe I should do one of those about me. In a lot of ways, witchcraft is a really personal practice, and so it really varies from practitioner to practitioner. And so I'd like to share a little bit about what my practice looks like, how I came to it, and some fun facts about me. I'm borrowing this list of questions from Jesse Huntenberg. We had a kind of a get to know you exercise in our Wise Ones Coven a while ago, and I really liked this particular list of questions, and so I'm going to share that with you today. The first question is, what kind of witch are you? I actually struggled to answer this question for a long time. I, I practice a lot of different things spiritually. And, you know, on, on the internet, there's all these videos about like, oh, the six types of witches, you know, and I just, I never really saw a thing that really fit me, you know, because a lot of them were very heavy with the stereotypes and like, well, you should only be one kind of witch, you know, like you either need to be a kitchen witch or, you know, golden dawn ceremonial witch. And that just never really resonated for me. Um, I also have been a longtime practitioner of shamanism. I don't identify as like a capital S shaman that, that practices on behalf of other people. Um, I actually see shamans of my own and then I have my own like shamanic practices that I do for myself. And a lot of shamanism is about how you see the world, seeing things in an interconnected way, believing that there's kind of a spirit in everything. And so for me, the shamanism is less about being a shaman for others and more about how it is that I practice, how it is that I live and see the world. For a long time, I felt like shamanism and witchcraft were separate. And then one day I had a realization that actually they're basically the same thing. And paganism and Wiccan um, practices are often, you know, very much coming from this European lens. Um, and shamanism is generally seen as being a non-European thing in some ways. But we know that shamanism has been practiced by many different cultures, including European cultures, throughout the millennia. And it's something that, you know, if you go far back enough in your lineage, chances are your ancestors were shamans at some point in time. Once I realized that there wasn't a whole lot of difference between what I was trying to practice as a witch and what I was trying to practice in terms of shamanism, I decided that I am a, a shamanic witch. <laughs> you know, like sometimes these labels, we get so I get so hung up on the labels of like, am I a shamanistic practitioner? Am I a witch? Am I this? Am I that? At the end of the day, I practice what I practice and I can call it anything, you know? And so for me, it's less about the actual label itself and what type of witch I am as to, in terms of, you know, what I feel inspired to practice. You know, sometimes I practice a little bit of kitchen magic. Other times I'm doing some ceremonial things. But really when it comes down to what my underlying philosophy is, I would say that shamanism is probably the thing that informs it the most. Question number two, how did you discover your path? I kind of feel like the path discovered me. <laughs> um, from a really young age, I was just on a different wavelength from a lot of other people I knew. I was really interested in the natural world. I saw things through a really magical lens. Um, I loved mythology and stories about magic, and I really wanted magic to be real. And I watched, you know, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and I Dream of Jeannie. Um, and, and then, you know, I started to understand that my way of seeing things, I wasn't the only one, you know, and that the idea of magic, it may not be about, you know, having sparks fly out from the end of your finger so you can change your outfit, but we do have a way of working with the energy that is around us and in us. And so for me, I feel like I grew up and realized, oh, magic is kind of real, you know, at least for me it is, you know, and that's, that's a subjective experience in a lot of ways. And so I don't necessarily expect everyone to be on board with that statement, but in my spiritual beliefs, I have found that the world is a magical place and there are things that are mysterious that I can't explain and I like to see it through that lens. 
I also grew up as an evangelical Christian, and so for a long time I didn't really have people around me that could understand my interests in that spiritual way, and it wasn't until my 20s where I started to explore more other traditions. I met more people who were doing things I was interested in, and so I started to dabble in other practices and, and read new books that had perspectives that were new to me. So it took a while for me to really find what it was that resonated. Nowadays, I would identify pretty squarely as being Buddhist and also a shamanic witch. Question number three, how long have you been practicing? Uh, that depends on how you define practicing. I've been, I've been seriously exploring the spiritual world since I was a very young child. I mean, I would say like four was when I really got interested in that stuff. Um, I explored it in the Christian tradition for many, many years. In my early 20s, I switched gears. I actually identified as an atheist for a long time and then uh, kind of decided that I wanted to reconnect with the spiritual world on my own terms, and I did. I would say that in my current form of things that this sort of solidified more in the last four years. Um, but I would say that in terms of practicing different types of spirituality, like including, you know, my yoga, meditation, you know, the interest in witchcraft, that's probably been around, you know, eight years since I started diving into that. Question number four, uh, what path or tradition do you follow? I kind of answered this one already, but I would say, you know, the Buddhism is a big thing for me. I do a lot of meditation and I really, I really love, you know, Buddhist psychology, Buddhist cosmology. Um, you know, again, I'm eclectic. Um, shamanism, witchcraft from the European traditions as well. And I would say that, you know, if we're getting really specific about it, like some hedge witchery and some kitchen witchery are thrown in there as well. And I love some ceremonial magic. You know, it's not what I want to do all the time. I don't want to be super formal and stodgy every day. Not that it's always formal and stodgy to do ceremonial magic. Um, but there's a, there's a time and a place where I like to get fancy. Question five. Are you solitary or do you practice in a coven? Um, you know, it's hard for me to answer this one now. For years, I would have definitely said solitary. Now that I'm a part of the Wise Ones Coven, I would say that I guess I'm sometimes part of a coven, you know, and it's it's an online coven, so we don't necessarily have in-person meetings where we're doing spells together, um, but we sometimes do spells through live stream, and there's an element of community that's been really nice to have to talk about what I'm doing with other people, to get ideas for different rituals or spells. So I'm, I'm excited to be a little less solitary these days. Question number six, do you practice divination? If so, what do you do? Yes, I love divination. I think it's wonderful. Uh, I practice primarily tarot and I include oracle cards in that. I feel like, you know, it's, it's all the kind of the same mechanism of utilizing this archetypal imagery to evoke feelings, thoughts, memories, to create a process where we explore what's going on. And I have dabbled a bit in runes. I've been saying now for the last, over the last year, oh, I need to learn how to use my runes and I still haven't done it. I'm a bad witch, so you know, maybe someday I'll get to using runes as well for divination. I would also say that I don't necessarily need cards to read people or situations. I can very much do that without the visual aid, but it is a nice tool and I, I do enjoy the ritual and the process of utilizing a specific divination tool. Um, but I think that it's important to acknowledge that we can we can see things even without our, our fancy toys. <laughs> Number seven, do you or would you teach wishcraft to children? Great question. A, I don't have any children. I don't want any children. But I do think that, you know, if you have children, it's okay to share with them what your spiritual beliefs and practices are. I think it's okay to include them in holidays and rituals. I, I do have strong feelings about, um, you know, forcing children to participate in organized religion. I do think that children should have a say as to 
what kind of spiritual practices they take part in. I think that they should be encouraged to critically think about these things, to make choices, to feel what is, you know, going to be working for them. Too often children are told, you know, this is the spiritual practice you need to have. This is what you need to believe. This is the church or temple or whatever you need to go to. And it's really hard for them to objectively make choices because there's so much pressure that they don't want to like disappoint their family or, you know, let someone down. So I don't know. That's a tricky question. I think you should be careful and you should make sure that your child feels able to express if what you're doing spiritually doesn't resonate for them. Number eight, do you have a matron or patron deity? I mean, I guess. Like, I don't necessarily work in a super strict binary way. I, I guess I wouldn't call it that. I do have some deities that I collaborate with more frequently than others, but I don't really like the term matron and patron. It feels really gendered and it just, it just doesn't resonate with me in a way that I find useful. So I just, I don't know, maybe I just am like, I want to be more, you know, I'm Venus and Sagittarius, so I, I don't want to be constrained um, in my relationships. The main deities I work with are Kali, Ganesha, Anubis, and Persephone. Um, and it kind of ebbs and flows. I don't work with all of them all the time. Right now, I'm not really working with anyone. I've been really busy. But I would, I, you know, I appreciate their support and, and I love working in that way. Honestly, I never thought that would be something I would want, you know. It was very unexpected, but it just felt organic and right. So I'm gonna go with it. Question number nine. My favorite pantheon. You know, this is a tough one. I would say overall probably the Hindu pantheon because that is where the most gods that I connect with kind of come from. Um, and you know, I, I'm, I'm a yoga teacher so I'm, I'm really big into that. And at the same time though, I really enjoy the Greek pantheon and the mythology. I would say that I work less spiritually with the Greek pantheon and more spiritually with the Hindu pantheon. But for like storytelling value and for entertainment, I definitely enjoy the Greek and Roman gods and goddesses. Question number 10, favorite goddess? Kali, definitely. Um, I began working with Kali unknowingly at a young age and, and you know, we can call it whatever. We can call it, you know, the tower or Kali or any kind of, you know, energy, but that um, feeling of, of chaos and um, turmoil that occurs in the center of transformation, you know, is a really powerful experience and something that came into my life at a young age, you know, and I didn't really have a choice about that. And so it's funny, some people are like, oh, you know, working with Kali is such an intense thing. Like, why would you pick that? And I'm like, I didn't pick that. <laughs> like, it just happened, you know, and it, it is what it is, you know, and I think I've learned immeasurably more than I would have if things had just been really simple and easy. And you know, it hasn't, it hasn't been easy, obviously, right? Like there's been a lot of suffering, a lot of tears, a lot of many, many hours of therapy. So, you know, it is what it is, but I'm glad that I felt in the times of difficulty that there was spiritual support for me available. Favorite God, uh, Anubis. I really, um, I find that particular archetype, there's a, a quietness, but also a fierceness and a mysteriousness. And I really identify with the piece around, you know, judging the hearts of men. And that may sound weird and presumptuous, <laughs> but uh, I just, you know, I've ended up in that role a lot professionally, actually, where, you know, I literally have been paid money to meet people, assess the contents of their life and mind, and make a decision about what's supposed to happen next. And it was very heavy work, and I took it very, very seriously because it's, you know, it's people's lives. Um, and I found that Anubis was an inspiration in being able to navigate that work and to feel uh, a sense of ethical groundedness as I, as I did it. Question number 12, what is your sun sign? I am a Capricorn, <laughs> a fact that I resisted for a very long time, but I do. I love structure. I love predictability. I like when people follow the rules, but I also am not so entrenched in that, that I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm very much someone that if the rules are not ethical, like we're going to blow those to hell and do something else. 
As a Capricorn, I'm basically like a grandma. I like to go to bed really early. I drink chamomile tea at lunchtime. Uh, <laughs> I like to know, you know, what's in my date book. Uh, I just, I, I'm an old person. I've always been an old soul, so it, it's quite fitting. Question 13, what is your moon sign? Um, my moon sign is Leo. So on my exterior, I may be a Capricorn, but on the inside, I'm like, very flashy, very flamboyant. I definitely have a side that has a lot of flair. I do enjoy performing and being the center of attention as Leos are ought to do. Question 14. Do you have a familiar? I would say that my two cats feel like my familiars. They are really close to me. Uh, we communicate really well with each other and they definitely are there to support me. Question 15. Uh, thoughts on the afterlife? Now that's a big question, right? Uh, my answer on this is that I, I'm, I'm a big fan, I guess, of the Buddhist cosmology. You know, we've got the wheel of samsara, rebirth, uh, different realms, you know, but I hold it really lightly. Honestly, I think the real answer is that I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't been there yet, at least not that I remember. So I, I you know, I keep an open mind. Like at the end of the day, it kind of doesn't matter to me what happens because I'm focused on like, how can I live my life in alignment with my values? How can I make a difference in the world? And since I don't have any control over what happens after I, you know, die in this physical body, I'm just going to focus on living the best that I can. Question 16. Have you had any paranormal experiences? I don't like using the word paranormal to describe my experiences. I would say that I've had mystical experiences. I've had unusual or magical experiences, you know, and, and I'm someone, I don't need it to objectively be um, an encounter with a ghost or an angel or this or that for it to be meaningful. You know, the brain is a mysterious thing and sometimes our brains give us really interesting information and whether or not that's objectively a deity or a creature, I don't know. But I have had some really unusual experiences that were very meaningful to me and I, I choose to ascribe to them a meaning that's helpful for me and I don't, I don't need anyone else's approval for that experience to be useful to me. Question 17. Are you out of the broom closet? Uh, I guess that depends. I guess I'm making this video, so yes. <laughs> Most of my friends are pretty aware, I think, of what I, you know, generally what I do spiritually. Some of the people I'm closer to may have more in-depth knowledge about what it is that I do. When it comes to work, you know, I think in different workplaces, I've had different levels of openness about that kind of stuff. You know, obviously when I'm new, I usually, you know, I take a minute for people to get to know me before I just kind of throw out all this stuff about me. So I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm often out, but I'm not always out. Of course, on this video, I'm definitely out. <laughs> Question 18. What is something that inspires you? I mean, so many things. I would say that, you know, art and dance and music definitely inspire me on a regular basis. A lot of the people that I work with inspire me when I see them you know, dealing with difficult challenges. Uh, I inspire myself sometimes. And I also find a lot of inspiration in nature. Question 19, do you have an altar? Yes, this is a must have for me. Um, I didn't for many years, I think just because I was moving so much. When I finished grad school and moved back to Salt Lake City, I was very intentional about creating an altar space in my house and kept it until I moved very recently. Um, whenever I travel, I usually bring like a, like I don't usually have like a physical altar, but I bring items from my altar to create like a temporary sort of space wherever it is that I am. Um, as I moved, I had to leave the little like table slash bench that I had for my altar in Salt Lake. I was, I was bummed about that. But I'm currently using, I have like an, another, a new little table that I use for my altar. And wherever I go, you know, when I'm living in a new place, I make sure to make space for that because I love having a place, you know, where I can meditate, where I can do rituals. And it's a visual reminder of the things that are important to me. And I keep items on it that have meaning to me. So it's a really lovely thing for me. I, I really recommend practicing with one if that's something you're interested in. Question number 20. What's a spell that you've done? 
Earlier this year, I did a spell to remove invisibility. It was one of the first spells that I like wrote myself. It was really fun. I enjoyed, you know, taking the time to plan the ritual and then, you know, carrying out the ritual and then the results of it, I think were pretty great. I felt that, you know, growing up, I had spent a lot of energy trying to be really invisible, to not be noticed. And as I got older, I found that that you know, dynamic was not serving me anymore. So the spell was about saying, okay, I've noticed this pattern that's unhelpful for me. What can I do now? How can I create a ritual that will help me to start a new dynamic? One where I feel like I can be seen and I'm not just hiding under this cloak of invisibility. Question 21. Do you have animal guides? Uh, yes. When it comes to animals, I think that I'm often drawing on inspiration from many different animals, but some significant animals that I've worked with in the archetypal realm would be the elephant, the fox, and the frog. Question 22. Favorite pagan holiday? Uh, definitely Samhain. It's my favorite, which is New Year. I do divination. I usually do a ritual. I cry a lot. I do a lot of work around grief and loss. I love it. It's awesome. Like, it's kind of weird, I guess, that my favorite holiday, I like sit at home alone, like with candles and I cry, but you know, whatever works. Question 23. Do you meditate? Yes. Definitely. I um, practice in the Theravadan Buddhist tradition. I go on silent retreats. My life has been a little chaotic, so my meditation practice has been difficult to stay on top of. Um, I haven't been meditating daily or close to daily as much as I would prefer to, um, but when things are, are a little less tumultuous and I'm not moving every, every couple weeks, um, I usually will meditate like 30 minutes at a time most days of the week. Um, lately, you know, there's been days where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fit in five minutes or 10 minutes and days where it doesn't happen at all. That's a goal of mine in the next month. I'm hoping that things stabilize, you know, with my living situation and I really just need to crack down and get back on having that good habit. When I'm meditating regularly, I feel a huge difference. Overall, my life has really changed, I believe, as a result of having a regular meditation practice. And I've noticed over the last few months, doing it a little bit less frequently, I definitely feel less centered. And so I, you know, it's it's hard. Sometimes life really throws you curveballs and you have every intention of following through on things and you just don't. And so I, I the part of me feels really guilty for not having practiced as much these last few months, but I also need to acknowledge that my life has been insane doing cross country move, you know, having health struggles and so I'm admitting openly that I have not been on top of that, but I, I'm working on it. Question 24, do you go to psychics, healers, Reiki people, etc.? cetera? Um, I um, have different tarot readers and shamans that I work with. I've worked with other energy healers. And so, yeah, I think it's important. Um, you know, you can do a lot for yourself, but sometimes you just need to go see someone else to get that extra support or to get an outside perspective. And I really enjoy every so often, you know, getting a tarot reading from someone else or going to do some energy work with someone because I I love having that, that outside perspective. 25. What are some witch books that have influenced you? Um, Starhawk's The Spiral Dance. I don't necessarily practice in the precise way that she outlines, but I really like some of the principles she's talked about around, you know, the cone of energy and working with magic. I also really love Rachel Pollock. Uh, she writes a lot about tarot and I find her books to be very inspiring. I enjoy the more spiritual um, aspects of tarot and how she goes into that. So I really recommend checking out those books. Another book that I like is The Way of the Shaman. And so, you know, as someone that sees witchcraft and shamanism as being very much intertwined, I would absolutely consider that a witchy book. It taught me a lot about journeying. I've also, you know, I mean, we can read books about stuff, right? But we have to go and experience it ourselves. So, you know, read the book and then go do the stuff. Question 26, favorite witch websites? Um, I really like Kellyanne Maddox. I like Josie Huttenberg. I love um, Serpent Fire. She, um, her name is Devony, and I forget her last name, but she makes some different decks and she has a really lovely Instagram. I love The Wild Unknown. So those are some of the websites that I probably check out more frequently than others. Question 27, favorite witch movie? I would say this movie called Birds of Passage. It's a really wonderful um, indigenous, like independent film. 
It was about, you know, an indigenous family that gets involved in the drug trade in Colombia, and it spans over the course of decades. And a big theme of the movie is around, you know, the indigenous traditions of reading dreams and interpreting those. And so that features heavily in the story. And a lot of the women in the story, they are, you know, absolutely practitioners. And, you know, I think it's easy when we hear, oh, what's a witchy movie? What's a witchy book? We think of, of white people and Europeans. But but, you know, there are so many other cultures that practice um, and have been practicing for a very long time in really rich traditions, uh, much more recently than many of our ancestors as white people. So I think it's good to, you know, check out what other cultures are doing in terms of energy work, in terms of things that are magical or mystical, because there's some amazing stuff out there. Question 28. Favorite mythological animal? Um, you know, I think my old standby is always the unicorn. I've always loved unicorns. They're so magical and wonderful. And I love uh, Bruce Koval's books about unicorns. I just, I've been rereading some of those stories, even though I'm an adult, because they're just so delightful. And I think connecting with that childlike sense of wonder, the unicorn as an archetype, it's, you know, there's a purity and just a freshness to it that I really enjoy. Question 29. Favorite season? That would be fall. I love leaves. I love pumpkins. I love apples. I love cider and all things fall. Question 30. Favorite herb? Um, catnip. <laughs> I'm such a crazy cat lady. Like I grow my own catnip. I harvest it and I dry it and I give it to my cats. Also, catnip can help keep mosquitoes away. So when you grow it on your porch uh, or in your garden, sometimes it can kind of help as a little bit of a repellent. Next question, tarot card of your choice, uh, the high priestess. I just love that kind of, you know, dark, mysterious, fierce, feminine energy. I've been diving into that for a long time now and I have nowhere near yet to hit the bottom. So I'm gonna keep going with that one. Question 34, favorite symbol or sigil? I love the spiral. To me, the spiral is a symbol of growth. You know, we keep going in and around a problem and it feels like we're going in circles, but really, right, we're, you know, concentrically moving in closer and closer to the center of the problem. Your book of shadows. Um, I use a black moleskin notebook. Uh, I really like it. It's simple, it's, you know, elegant, and it meets my needs. Favorite tarot deck? Right now, I'd have to say the She-Wolf Tarot. It's beautiful, it's rich with symbolism, and her guidebook is absolutely kick-ass. And last question, something witch-related that you want right now. I would like a statue of Kali, <laughs> and I'm working on it. Once I have more of a, like, a stable home base, maybe I'll buy myself one. All right, well, thanks for listening along to this Get to Know Your Witches episode. I'd like to get to know you if you want to leave comments below, if you have thoughts or questions. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.